I will give you back your beauty with this young blood. Yes. Kill her. Kill her. And then there will be only me. Only me. It would be a fair criticism to say that up till now we've featured less than prominent features in Barbara Steele's filmography. That changes today. 1962's The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock is an absolute classic of gothic Italian cinema. And here, we're not talking about gothic melodrama, as we did with the previous features. Here, we're talking about straight-up gothic horror. In tone, it's easy to see how this film could be confused as a Hammer production at the time. It's a lush production with great performances and a plot that seems more modern. Although it takes place in 1885, it has a certain modernness to its aesthetics. The relationships of the characters seem a little bit more in line with the 1960s. That's not to say they're in line with today, because they're not. But you can see how in its own time, this probably felt like a very modern picture. Oh, and it's in color, which gives it an added luster and makes it look even more expensive than the film was. Director Ricardo Fridi had earlier made I, Vampire, and that's a, another film that has endured very well inside the genre and actually is the film that really gave birth to the Bava-esque gothic horror trend, as well as to Bava's career himself. Here, Barbara Steele takes on a slightly unusual role for her. She has objected to being called a scream queen, and that's appropriate. Mostly, she's an aggressor in her films, or at least not a wilting flower waiting to be saved. She is both those things in this film, however. And while that might seem to diminish her in some ways, in fact it does the opposite, as we see a great range from her as an actress that sometimes we weren't able to see when she was asked to play a reincarnated witch or a vengeful schemer. Here, she's allowed to be vulnerable. But Barbara Steele vulnerability does not equal weakness. That's a distinct difference in her performance versus many of the actresses performing in gothic horror at the time. She's also at the height of her beauty. There's no way to not look at a single frame in this film and not just be blown away. She's like something out of a painting. Outside her Bava work, this is probably her most recognized performance. And it's easy to see why people would be drawn to this particular movie. It is, to this day, far more frankly disturbing in its themes than most films that are more brazen with their imagery. This is a film about necrophilia. Kind of. Barbara Steele plays the wife of the title character, Dr. Hitchcock, who is a renowned surgeon who has been performing experimental surgery. He's also, as the film begins, drugging and raping his wife, pretending her to be dead. 1962, there's a film with this kind of themes going on. Unfortunately, the good doctor seems to accidentally overdose his wife and kill her. But all is not lost. He remarries, and that is where Barbara Steele enters the picture. Her first night in the house, however, she's certain that someone's trying to get into her room, and then, thereafter, she's plagued by images of the dead wife. Is the wife dead? Or did she survive in a kind of comatose, near-death existence? And what will the doctor do? If you can blame this film for anything, it might be for a slight tendency towards schlock. But, considering its dark, dark themes, it's pretty forgivable. Do you want a realistic portrayal of this material? I don't. The film is shot like a nightmare and feels like one. Now, the horrible Dr. Hitchcock is not a difficult film to find. Anything from lousy YouTube streams to deluxe Blu-rays are available. And unlike other films of the period, you don't want to watch this on an inferior format. This is a gorgeous movie and a seminal work of the period. However, because of its themes and now its age, it's kind of fallen into this donut hole. You're not going to see this film appear on Turner Movie Classics. You're not going to find it easily available at Walmart either. The film is in a weird position. But for the horror fan who wants to see the earliest of transgressive horror cinema coming into the 1960s, that would lead directly to the more exploitive elements of the 1970s. This is a great starting point. In fact, I would say this is the best possible starting point. The past is burning, and I'm 
and that nightmare is over forever.